as you start to tune in to guidance and really listening in, um, sometimes the response, we were talking about this earlier, sometimes the response doesn't always come right away. Sometimes there's a waiting period. But are there any other signals or signs? Like in the past I've heard you talk about nigglings and tickles. So the nigglings I get is um, maybe, maybe I misunderstood this one, maybe I shouldn't go there. Or and the tickles is somewhere well, I want to follow that. Um, so I guess what I'd like to hear more about is when you're following, maybe some of the signs to look for, because I just found that the further along I go with this, the trickier my little ego gets. And um, and so I uh, sometimes relying on those tickles and those nigglings, I sometimes find them to be more reliable than anything that's going on up here. Sometimes things are clear. Sometimes it's like, boom, okay, that's what I need to do. But other times I, I sit and I sit. And sometimes I sit for a week on something and it's just nothing really is coming. Yeah. I think with the feelings and the nigglings and the ticklings and all this, it's a bit like we were talking at dinner tonight where you were saying it's sometimes here with New York that there's so many, so much stimulation, sights and smells and sounds and sharp sounds and loud sounds and the mind can try to go into a numbing out or kind of close things out sometimes. We were talking about how that can happen very easily. Uh, and the opposite is kind of like your August rush moment, you know, where he's in the middle of the street conducting the sounds and he's like, he's the conductor of the universe. Mm -hmm. And he's just feeling so connected with everything. Every little sound is part of, of a big symphony. But um, I think, you know, how you feel, it's, it is such a precious thing to feel. Feeling is an aspect of our consciousness. And I know for myself, and I think for a lot of us, we, there were times when we, I had numbed out, denied, repressed. I mean, I look back at high school yearbooks and I see the eyes glazed over, you know, like looking at, listening to the teachers and thinking, oh my God, I can't even imagine navigating growing up. And I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. And, I, and it felt overwhelming and confusing. Uh, I, I said I was a, a loner and a wallflower, so I did not go out on my first date till I was 27. So I really sealed it off pretty tough from a lot of those emotions that people typically experience through puberty and young adulthood, I was really sealed off. And then became the unsealing, you know, it's like, how do I really reverse it? Because this is not going in a helpful direction. I, I'm not going to be able to experience love and joy and happiness and peace. I'm not going to be able to feel those emotions if I can't feel, if I'm not allowing myself to feel everything else. I, I, I just think allowance and permission, the more allowance and permission we can give ourselves, the better. Now the ego will say, well, that could be dangerous to your relationships. Um, you start feeling your feelings. Um, maybe you'll even start expressing some feelings if you feel them. And I even had a friend who got more and more and more joyful, Lisa, and, and she would go to her spiritual circles, Course of Miracles things, and she would have such roaring joy that would come out, they would say, tone it down. <laughs> Even her spiritual circles were telling her to tone down her joy, because it was too threatening. It was almost like, whoa, if this has any reality behind it, that means I must be in serious denial, <laughs> because that joy is through the roof. And so that, that takes a lot, a lot of allowance and, and permission. And, and it seems to, I think the biggest drawback is the sense of, um, when, I, when I was in university and I started going through this spiritual awakening, I thought, uh-oh, what's this going to do to grad school? What's this going to do, you know, I was in my first relationship and my heart was opening, but it was really tumultuous. It was like all those repressed emotions were flying up. Mm -hmm. How am I going to even make it through graduate school with this? Mm -hmm. How do people relate, actually have a relationship and function mm -hmm. in this world? It's so intense. How do they even get papers done? and and function and have jobs. I couldn't imagine because I held it down for so long and when I ripped the doors open then I, it felt almost dysfunctional. But that's the thing, 
when you're doing it, then you have these relationships and you want to keep and maintain the relationships, but actually the Spirit is saying, you need to go through a healing and your relationships will just reflect things back to you and show you the way, show you what you're denying and repressing. But I've had to be so willing to open my heart up and not to go for the, the love and the continuity and everything in the form. Because when we try to protect the form, we shut down the heart. And we've got such an investment in the form that we, we just, or we'll, we'll say, let's go at a snail's pace here, or a turtle, a slow turtle, a snapping turtle. You know, that's as far as I can go, God, I, the snapping turtle. And, and God's like, okay, you're not asking for too much, you're asking for far too little. You could do better than snapping turtle speed, you know, if you really want to know the truth, you know, you have to open up. It seems a risk, it seems like we could risk, we could... If our heart opens up, then you become less competitive. Well, how does that help you get ahead in the world if you're less competitive in a world of competition? Uh, you become, you start to lose your drive. You start to lose your drive for success as the world defines it, the more you open your heart. You start to, the things you thought were success suddenly start to be flipped around and just being present and feeling happy, the simple joys of life start to become important. And all the things that everyone, most of the seven billion are running after, you don't give a hoot about. You know, and you think, I don't know, am I in the wrong planet or <laughs> something here? Because it's, it's spinning around. But actually, those are all really good. And, and we've all gone through them. That's really why we're here tonight, to, to say, follow your heart. Let those emotions up. The water may get rocky and choppy for a while, but it's going to lead to smooth sailing. That emptiness, that stillness that we were all talking about. Because there was such a full allowance to let everything come up, no matter how it looked. I, I, think, I, said, I think I cried for like 10 years in a row. I think there was 10 years where I just, after all the repression and denial, it, just, it was like Niagara Falls coming out and just cry, cry, cry. Luckily I had a dog. Chipper who would lick, lick, lick. We made a good team, the crying one and the licking one, uh, because of this non judgment. You know, it was a sense that I could let it up with my dog Chipper, and she was so, never mind salty tears, she just would hang in there with me. But that was, I, that's why I didn't need psychotherapy and a lot of the other ways that people go about it, because I had unconditional love reflected back to me, so I didn't have to hold back. I did it in the basement. And it took long, a long time, but it worked. But, you know, that's really what we want to talk about, is, is how do you have that trust to be so authentic and to, to see that it's not really a risk. It seems like a risk when you're doing it, but when those nigglings and those nudges come, that's, that was my pathway. I always say I felt it was like a tickle in my heart that started one point, maybe in young adulthood, and then it was so amazing, the tickle, that I decided to follow the tickle, like somebody had a feather right inside my heart chamber, and it was tickling away, and I said, this is not intellectual, this, this isn't even conceptual, whatever this thing is, is wow. And, but it still took the faith to follow that, in the face of a lot of the doubts that I would lose something dear to my heart. I followed that. But as I followed it, it grew stronger, much stronger.